Well, the wife of Michael Kovrig, one of the Canadians imprisoned in China for over 560 days, just think about how long you've been in quarantine, 560 days in prison. She says Canada can do a lot more to secure the release of her husband. Vina Najubala, who is separated from Mr. Kovrig, is calling out the Chinese government for arresting her husband on what she calls baseless charges. Here's what she said in an interview with the Globe and Mail yesterday. Look at this. Having known Michael for 20 years, um, having been married to him for many, many years, having been on the posting with him in China and privy to everything that all of his work, I know that he has done nothing to endanger China's national security, that he is innocent, that he is a pawn, and that his detention must come to an end. He is a pawn. And then, taking him at the Canadian government, she also says there's a lot more Ottawa can do to ensure the release of her husband and Michael Spavor. She argues that the government's so-called rule of law defense is not strong enough, and it masks the fact that the justice minister can intervene in the extradition case against the Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. In other words, letting the charges against her drop in exchange for a kind of release or prisoner swap for the two Michaels. Listen to what she said. What I find puzzling in the current moment, especially given what's been happening today and in the last couple of days, is the insistence that rule of law does not allow for the Minister of Justice to exercise discretion and to even consider the question of whether or not this particular extradition should proceed or whether there are national interests that would warrant a conversation, political judgment, to decide what is in the best interest of Canada. So what I'm interested in is to explore and get very clear on what is the perspective on the rule of law of the government versus what I'm hearing from other experts. Okay, now, as Ms. Najibullah points out, there has been an option on the table for Canada to secure the release of Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spavor, as some believe, that would be letting Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou walk free. Remember, she was arrested in Vancouver at the request of the United States. We have an extradition treaty with them only days before Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spavor were imprisoned. Many have explicitly linked, uh, or not so subtly linked the two, including some Chinese officials. The government maintains nothing can be done politically and they need to uphold the independence of the court. But a group of legal experts and former justice ministers say that's not quite the case. So what exactly is within Ottawa's power here? Should Canada, if it could, engage in so-called hostage diplomacy? For more on that, I'm joined now by Brian Greenspan. Now, he's a Toronto-based lawyer with years of experience in extradition cases, and he provided a 10-page opinion paper on this case to the Justice Minister. Uh, Mr. Greenspan, uh, good to talk to you, and I hope you and your family are well. Um, we keep hearing the government says there needs to be an independent judicial system. What can the Justice Minister do in this case? Could he, in this case, have intervened earlier on the extradition case? Well, in the Extradition Act, uh, especially after the 1999 amendments, there is a clear and, quite frankly, very straightforward and unequivocal power or authority in the Minister of Justice uh, to withdraw an authority to proceed at any time, uh, which means that the process itself is initiated by the Minister of Justice, uh, initiated with an authority to proceed. And during that first phase of extradition, which is the judicial process, there is express language which permits the withdrawal of that authority to proceed at any time. So it is an option available. It was meant as a result of the 1999 amendments to be uh, the minister's safety valve to reevaluate whether an extradition should proceed and to withdraw it in a timely fashion. So that it's incorrect in our view, uh, incorrect in the view that we advance to uh, uh, Alan Rock, the former Minister of Justice, and to Louise Arbour, formerly of the Supreme Court of Canada, uh, when asked what the view was as a matter of law, our view was there is authority to intervene, and it's not whether they can, it's whether they should. Uh, whether they should is a, an issue that I didn't address. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. I mean, there's a political... Let me say the political side which you're referring to there. What are the criteria under which that kind of intervention may be justifiable? I spoke to a former ambassador to China who said, for example, 
if Canada uh, regards the extradition request as explicitly political and baseless, early in the process, maybe the justice minister could dismiss it. That It's no longer early in the process, uh, well, sir. So under what, what would be the criteria? No, I, I, I don't address that issue. The idea of the legal opinion was as a result of the fact that what had been expressed by the Minister of Justice and through the Prime Minister was that there was no power at this stage of the proceeding to intervene. There was no power to make the choice. There was no opportunity to have an option. Uh, I only address the issue of whether that option exists. In Section 23.3 of the Extradition Act expressly provides the option. Whether they should or not, and whether or not the political considerations are such that uh, the government views it not in Canada's best interest is a political issue that uh, I was not, uh, I will not direct my attention to and have not. Uh, we wanted to divide the lines between what the legal mm -hmm. opinion was and whether or not uh, the political uh, decision should be either to, uh, uh, to choose the bargain or not to choose the bargain, but the option was available, and that's what my opinion was directed to. But, but, but you and I both know that, you know, in the, the law is a living tree, as it were, and so how, it, how you exercise it also matters. Does, let me just ask you, does the role of the justice minister intervening in something like this, has that been recalibrated or changed, for example, after the SNC-Lavalin affair? Is there now a little more hesitation to exercise that power that you rightly say actually exists but may have to be used very judiciously? Well, the, the analogy really isn't appropriate. Uh, SNC-Lavalin dealt with a criminal prosecution. Uh, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada in our system are the same person. Uh, and after SNC-Lavalin uh, and the issues that arose during it, uh, you'll recall uh, that uh, there was a report made by a former justice minister, Justice Minister McClellan, uh, provided a report as to whether those two rules should continue to be exercised by the same person. And she determined and recommended to the government that that one person be both or occupied both roles. It is an undefined or less clearly defined role when it comes to criminal prosecutions. There can be no clearer act than the Extradition Act in terms of the divisions between those two roles. There is a role played by the Minister of Justice. That role is as Minister of Justice in terms of policy and the best interests of Canada, its international commitments, and the role of the Cabinet in relation to that decision-making. There is a role played by the Attorney General. It is a separately defined role. They don't overlap in any fashion. The Minister of Justice directs the Attorney General to take carriage of the actual extradition hearing as agent on behalf of the requesting state. So the Attorney General acts upon the request of the Minister and acts for the United States in relation to the extradition of Mrs. Meng. Now, having said that, those rules are clearly defined. It's not as if there is any confusion mm. as there could be and was often expressed by certain people to be in relation to SNC Lavalin. So they aren't analogous at all. They, it, they really are in totally different areas and one should influence the other. All right. Uh, it's fascinating. The power in that, in that report, Mr. Greenspan, resides in the justice minister who could, if he in this case wanted to, exercise that authority to intervene on the extradition case. Sir, thank you for your perspective, I think. God forbid we ever inject facts into the political process. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you.